What's up guys, David Land here continuing my look at the Team Hot Wheels Pro Racing 1998 First Edition Kart Series of Diecast. This time we are taking a look at Max Pappas' number 25 RC Arrow Wells Reynard Toyota Firestone from the 1997 Kart World Series. Now, uh, as you guys are well aware, I've taken a look at lo a lot of these die casts. I think we're about halfway through the series. There were eight. I've done four. This is five. Uh, so uh, uh, these are fantastically modeled die casts. Um, this is obviously a Reynard. The last time we took a look at Christian Fittipaldi's Swift. There were only Swifts and Reynards in this series, though there were Lolas in an earlier series of Hot Wheels. Indy cars, uh, but this is an absolutely fantastic die cast, especially if you guys remember uh, from a previous video uh, where I've already done a Max Pappas car, though that was a Mini Champs car, and that was in the 118 scale. Uh, but it was modeled on the same car, the 1997 uh, version of this MCI car. So let's take a quick look at the box. An absolutely fantastic looking box as usual. Uh, here's the car in there. Uh, we are going to take an obviously uh, much closer look at that later on. Uh, but the box itself is absolutely stunning. I love the artwork on these boxes. Uh, it's one of the big appeals of, uh, of me collecting this entire series. Uh, it just looks wonderful. Uh, I wish diecasts, I wish diecast boxes looked like this still. Uh, but that's, that's another rant for another time. Cart officially licensed product. We'll take a look here on the back. Max Pappas, RCRO Wells slash MCI Racing. The sponsor was MCI. The chassis, the chassis was a, a Raynard 97i. The engine was a Toyota RV8B. The bir his birthday was October 3rd, 1969, and his hometown is Newport Beach, California, though the, uh, Max Pappas is indeed an Italian. In 20 races, Max's best finish came to the 1997 US 500, where he finished an impressive 8th. Eighth. Out of those 20 starts, Max was the fastest Toyota-powered qualifier in 13 events. Yes, that was uh, when you had to kind of make the distinction of who was the fastest Toyota qualifier. Uh, Toyota entered the sport uh, of IndyCar racing in 1996 uh, and were, were pretty slow out the gate. Um, but they started kind of finding their footing uh, in 1999, and they got their first win uh, in 2000. So, uh, yeah, it took them a while to get going, but eventually they ended up winning the CART Championship, the Indy 500, and the IRL Championship. So uh, let's take a look at this beautiful MCI Reynard out of its box. So here it is, the absolutely stunning MCI Reynard Toyota out of its box. Uh, I mean, what can you say? It's a very beautiful scheme. Uh, as evidenced, of course, in my last video that I featured an MCI IndyCar. Uh, if you don't know what MCI is, this is something I kind of wanted to touch on. Uh, MCI is, uh, or was, I don't think they're around anymore, uh, but they were a, uh, a phone company, like phone minutes, like long distance minutes. Like there was something like back in the day, uh, you kids probably won't understand that, or people who were born uh, fairly late in the 90s or the 2000s won't understand uh, that you used to... Wow, look at this. Uh, we got a bit of a problem with the uh, with the suspension there. We'll have to take a look at that in a little bit closer detail. But um, you used to be, have to pay for phone minutes uh, for long-distance calling, and long-distance calling was kind of a a black art. You didn't really know what was long distance and what wasn't. Um, so, uh, like, if you had to call outside of, like, your area code or something, I don't remember exactly how it worked, but you had to pay for it. And, you, and like, uh, MCI was a company that provided long distance uh, phone minutes. Not like cell phone minutes, like your, your landline, your home phone. Uh, yeah, that, w that lasted pretty long. Not really. Um, I kind of feel like that's going to last about as long as, um, as, uh, as uh, like uh, charging for data like you know how we charge for data now that's uh, that's gonna go the way of the dinosaur or the way of MCI so I'm gonna definitely take a look at that suspension it looks pretty wonky uh, I don't know if I'll be able to fix it I was able to fix the uh, the uh, the Fittipaldi but I don't know about uh, the Max Pappas here is the trading card that comes with it and an absolutely lovely photo as usual uh, from the uh, Homestead preseason test as you can see, in 17 starts in 1997, Pappas claimed one top 10 and eighth at Michigan, and nine top t 15 finishes. He was the top Toyota qualifier and finisher for that season. So yeah, uh, definitely um, uh, Max Pappas earned his uh, earned his uh, reputation 
for being able to get the maximum out of the Toyota engine, which was just simply not up to par with the Hondas and the Fords and the Mercedes Benz of the uh, of the period. Uh, so yeah, definitely Max Pappas uh, was uh, was fairly good at uh, at extracting the most out of a car. In fact, uh, he ended up getting a, a job at Ray Hall, uh, Team Ray Hall. Yeah, that, look at that. Yeah, Max has been in the wall, folks. Look at that. Uh, he didn't uh, he didn't express the max out of this. I don't know how I'm going to fix that. Uh, that's pretty comprehensive uh, damage there. I th I'd say uh, that's kind of unfortunate, but oh well. Uh, but yeah, he uh, definitely he finished eighth in the '97 Michigan 500. Um, I've watched that race on uh, YouTube, and uh, that was definitely a race of attrition. Uh, and his uh, Toyota power plant just didn't give up the ghost, and he was able to run the whole 500 miles. But back in those days, uh, for IndyCar racing, especially in the 500 mile enduros, uh, it was that was kind of how you had to win races or at least finish races. You know. Uh, to uh, to first uh, to win first you must finish or something like that. Rick Mears uh, says that quote a uh, hundred times better than I just did, but uh, it was a uh, it was definitely interesting back in the day when we had multiple chassis and engines uh, and tires, uh, the combinations that worked, the combinations that didn't work, the combinations that blew up, the combinations that didn't blow up. Uh, it was a lot of fun back in those days, uh, just from a technical diversity standpoint. Uh, and this diecast. I mean, how many more times do I have to say it? Uh, these Reynard uh, diecasts are just absolutely fantastic. So this is the third Reynard I have out of the box. Of course, uh, there's... Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Real quick. Real quick. So you guys may have noticed, especially in the Krishna Fittipaldi review, and certainly in this, the reason that uh, these... Uh, the suspensions, these front suspensions seem to be wonky or broken or smashed in. The reason for that is, and it's really unfortunate, because um, they have this really uh, tight uh, packaging here, and it's the the car is literally smashed up against the uh, the cardboard backing on these cars, and unfortunately, um, especially the longer they stay in the package, it seems the long uh, the more they're prone to warping. Uh, I think that uh, it's just really unfortunate. Uh, I think it would say it's a poor packaging decision on Hot Wheels' part. Um, they kind of smash the cars in there, especially the Reynards seem a lot more prone to this uh, than the than the Swifts were, but uh, they seem to be both prone to it, unfortunately. Uh, thankfully, my Alex Zanardi is in great shape, and my uh, Mark Blundell is also in great shape. These are the three Reynards I have so far. Um, in fact, uh, this was the winner of the 97 Michigan 500, and this was the second place car. This was the eighth place car. Seems like they chose uh, to uh, do cars based on how they did in the Michigan 500. But anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Let's get a whole group shot in here. Uh, let's see if we can get them all in the shot. Of all the Hot Wheels Pro Racing cars, and uh, I do have a playlist. I put a playlist together of all these uh, reviews if you want to watch them, if this is your first one. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. I think the next pro racing car I'm going to take a look at is uh, uh, Patrick Carpentier's Alumax car uh, from Bentonhausen. So I hope to see you guys there. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube, and we'll see you in the next video. Yeah!